Welcome to season two of Chats from the Chess Freezer. Oh, it's 3.9 degrees in here, so let's not stuff around and let's dive into the new season. <gasps> right, before we dive into this chat with Megan Gittell, let me point out a couple of things. I recorded this way, way, way back in January. Now, I feel like I've certainly uh, gotten a lot older, I've put on a few, some COVID kilos during the year. Now, Maggie this year was preparing for Barclays Marathon as well as Big's Backyard. Obviously, Barclays isn't happening and Big's Backyard this year has turned into a virtual event which has been held on the 17th of October. For me right now, it's this weekend and I'm very excited because I'm supporting the Australians. So, here we go. Hope you really enjoy this chat with Maggie Gattel because I tell you what, she is an absolutely amazing woman. She's done some amazing things in running and throughout her career. It's really fascinating. Well, Maggie Gattel, thank you very much for joining me on this uh, Chats from the Chess Freeze. I'm really looking forward to this chat because what you've done, uh, particularly at the last Bigs Backyard, was absolutely, absolutely outstanding. Thank you. It was a good time. <laughs> <laughs> so before we get into that, I'd like to uh, get a bit more of an understanding of your running background, because you only ran your first marathon only about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 2009 was my first marathon. Crazy. So, yeah. what are, so how did you get into uh, ultra running? Um, there was a race in Philadelphia that I... Um, well, I lived in Philly at the time, and I, uh, most of my running was on this uh, loop. It's called the Kelly Drive Loop. Anyone who knows and lives in Philly would know it. It's like an eight-and-a-half-mile loop that goes on both sides of uh, the Schuylkill River, which runs through Philadelphia. And um, in July, they, they used to hold this 24-hour race on the loop. So, you know, I'd go out and do my little run, and then and during the day, and you'd see these people running uh, around this loop. And I kind of fa figured out what it was, and... Some of them look miserable, but it also is kind of intriguing. Um, and so for like two years, I delayed signing up for it. And I finally signed up for it in 2011. Um, so the, yeah, I, I chose a 24 hour in the middle of July in Philadelphia as my first, first ultra ever, which wow. is, I mean, have you ever been to Philadelphia? In no, this, I haven't. Or, well, <clears throat> it's really humid in the winter and the summer, but in the summer it could be, you know, it could be heat in an index of over 100 degrees, and that was not rare for that race to have like that kind of heat. <laughs> uh, uh, and crazy. obviously, that makes nutrition really tricky as it is, let alone for some newbie who has no idea what they're doing. <laughs> so it was a disaster. <laughs> uh, I mean, <laughs> so not how a did that pan disaster, out? but yeah, I was pretty nauseous by 20 miles, and then I just just puking the whole time. Uh, but I had a lot of friends helping me, you know, no one, I didn't have any ultra runner friends, but I know they kind of patched me up and they fed me soup overnight. And then, you know, as the temperature's cool and I, the nausea went away and, you know, you, you finally puke and rally, um, I was able to run a little bit. So I, I made it to 97 miles. My goal is a hundred. Um, so, but it wasn't pretty. <laughs> <laughs> it, certainly, it certainly sounds that way. So, um, so from there, from your first uh, 24 hour, uh, where did that journey take you uh, prior to Biggs in 2018? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, so my, I, I signed up for that same race the, the year after because um, I wanted to improve on it. And I thought maybe instead of, you know, just kind of trying that race again, I would add maybe like a shorter race into it to kind of like figure out how this works. So I ran like a 50 miler. Um, uh, and then over the course of the years, like I, I would, you know, I just kind of started to experiment with different race formats. Um, you know, I moved from a lot of flat races to try like a couple mountain races. Um, and, you know, I liked the time race. And I started with my first ever ultra is time, like a time race on a, on a loop. So those monotonous loops never scared me. Some people don't have any interest in it. And, you know, they like to run point to point or trails and stuff. And I like all that as well. But um, I like the, the bigs format was intriguing because it kind of levels the playing field and takes away a lot of the factors that make like a mountain race, a mountain race. Um, 
so I thought that was like a super interesting format. And then 2018, when I went last year, or two years ago, now it's 2020, uh, I had like really great time, even though I like was really disappointed with how I did. So, I mean, it's just a fun race because you get to see all these people, just like in a 24 hour race, you get to see a lot of people over and over again where you would normally not even be near them in a race because either they're faster or they're slower. Um, so I think that aspect is really, really cool. Yeah, so going into uh, the 2018 bigs, you did 44 hours in that one. Uh, did you train specifically for it? Um, yeah, I mean, I didn't know how, I mean, I knew I wanted to run over 200 miles and I had never had run that far before. So um, I didn't, my training wasn't much different than it would be for, I, uh, for a 100 miler uh, or like a 24 hour race or anything. Um, but, but I tried to make sure I love running trails and I tried to make sure to add more pavement in this year to my training, because I think the pavement is what gets a lot of people. It's what got me last year. I think, you know, I, the, just the, there's no variation. It's just flat and it got to me. So I tried to add that in this year and run more pavement. Yeah. And, um, cause for those who don't know, uh, at nighttime, it's it's pavement run, and on during the day, it's uh, almost a tricky uh, trail run. Uh, yeah. I noticed, uh, sort of having a look at your times from 2018 to 2019, you're a lot faster in 2018. On the nighttime loops, you're getting say 14 minutes, and during the day, uh, nine minute rest. But last year. Uh, the daytime loops, you're only getting about five minutes rest on each lap. So was that a conscious effort to slow yourself down? Um, maybe, yeah. I ran with Courtney last year, so I guess I was running whatever she was running. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but my crew is really good this year. Well, you know, I, I shared crew with, with Courtney last year, um, and I had some friends come and help. But, but I, we were so dialed this year, so I felt like that was a good – pace to run uh, and plus it was kind of crowded I felt like in in the very first day this year I guess it was crowded maybe last year but we I think we ran it ahead a bit more um so I was kind of in the middle and I liked that pace and that amount of time so uh that's just what I kept running I guess and, and then yeah at night I got 13 I was just getting 13 minutes of of rest I think maybe less and I don't know, the pace felt good and I felt like I could go for days doing that pace. So that's what I did. Yeah, it's, and yeah, from, I uh, had a chat to Will Haywood only a, a couple of days ago, who obviously finished second to you at the 2019 Bigs Backyard. And uh, yeah, he looked completely spent at 36 hours, but somehow uh, superhuman effort to get to 59. Yeah. He just said that you always look so fresh. How fresh do you actually feel at 60 hours? Um, well, I mean, there's ups and downs. There's times when I was like, I probably look ragged and felt not so great. But I mean, I still had that goal of like over 300 in my mind and then see what happens after that. So I just kind of like had to mentally trick myself or... Um, I mean, I didn't feel terrible, but I didn't feel great. But in, in, in relation, I think, I don't know. I mean, part of it, you just try to look good, but uh, I mean, I was definitely tired. Um, but yeah, I mean, just Will looked just really bad in comparison, <laughs> which <laughs> Will, I Will mean, shocking. It, it just, it just makes that what he did just that much more amazing, you know, like, you know, there's people that looked great. And then all of a sudden they're out and like, then there's Will. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, that's pretty superhuman. You're right. Yeah. And just the way, certainly just the way that he uh, kept turning up time after time and was just there and, you know, always telling his crew from 36 hours that he wanted to pull out. But uh, yeah, somehow they just got him out there and yeah, never really gave him an excuse to, to pull out. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh did you, after you did your 2018 Bigs Backyard, did you uh, change your strategy at all or your, perhaps your mindset in your training? Um, well, my strategy 
for the next for well training wise um i just wanted to make sure i got in consistent running and mileage um i still did speed work but you know and then i i kind of traveled a lot i i do event athletes and uh, event manager at uh tailwind nutrition here in durango and so i travel a good amount for my job so when i traveled i tried to make sure i got in you know good runs i got to run cool places but you know, you stand on your feet a lot. So it's good training. Um, so you're just on your feet all the time. And then, um, my strategy for the race that I was going to like the main takeaways I had from 2018 was what I did with my break. So instead of just sit in a chair, like actually stretch and, you know, either whether it's like dynamic stretching or later we had the, uh, my buddy, Amelia Boone brought all these like vibrating, there were gun things and you know just hitting those spots that were bothering me and my crew jen and gina and annie um just doing tape and whatever k tape they could to like kind of keep things you know address them before they became huge problems um and then consistently just like taking the same i would take the same amount of i took like 100 calories of tailwind with me it's just liquid um every loop and then I would eat something in between um every if I felt hungry like mashed potatoes or we ate a lot of grits and stuff um and I saw and, fancy, fancy ramen what's fancy ramen yeah oh fancy ramen um I don't know it's just like it's better than cup of noodles I don't know they had them at like Walmart I think it's like Mike's or something is the brand I don't know it was good it's like it has more well, I don't know if it has more fat than the other stuff, but <laughs> it tastes better. <laughs> I just had uh, uh, some packs of Tailwind actually turn up. Um, but, oh, nice. <laughs> and uh, well, obviously you work for Tailwind, which is uh, more, it's more of a coincidence than anything else. But um, what was your strategy using the caffeinated uh, Tailwind compared to the others? Yeah, well, so for the first time in my life, I did a caffeine taper. So um, early October, I went off caffeine totally, and it was miserable. Oh, and horrible. yeah, it was. And um, I was actually so I. Um, this is all related. I'm just gonna go on a little <laughs> tangent, but like, uh, Meredith Terranova, she writes for Ultra Running Magazine. Here, she's um, her background's in nutrition, and she did a little interview with me for what I did at Biggs. And she wrote that like um, the caffeine taper is good just because like mentally it helped me um, when I did consume caffeine during the race. But she said that there's actually no scientific evidence that like the taper, that the caffeine would affect me anymore with the taper. But I just, I just don't believe that. <laughs> I can't. Because like, I, I feel like if I drank coffee right now, like maybe I'd be awake, but I wouldn't feel like awake. It wouldn't give me a boost. It, it's just because I consume like three cups of coffee like American sized cups of coffee yeah. <laughs> during the day. Cause I feel like, you know, it doesn't really make much of a difference. It's just this mental thing. I know I have coffee in the morning and then I feel more awake. Um, but during bigs, like when I took caffeine, finally I held off as long as possible on that first night, just kind of like midway through the night, maybe a little beyond just kind of to get me um, into the day, kind of feeling more refreshed. Um, I would started with the caffeine tailwind and, you know, I'd do like the green tea one or the tropical one. Um, and, uh, it also holding off caffeine in the night, I was tired enough that each time I came in, I could like lay down and actually sleep where I was in 2018. I was just pumping caffeine into myself at night and then trying to lay down and my head was rushing with thoughts and I couldn't sleep at all. So I think those little micro naps added up all through the lap for the two nights to get me through to the third day. Um, and I think strategically holding off caffeine to get those naps in was like pretty useful. Um, and then to wake yourself up during the day, like you normally pretend like you slept the whole night, have your morning caffeine and get on with your day. <laughs> uh, on the, the day loops, you know, only five minutes, what was your uh, routine when you'd come into the camp? um oh my crew is great like by the time we had our own tents and will was on one side and i was on the other all i wouldn't even it didn't even have to open like the they put on um, tarps up because it was raining so 
um, and it's pretty hard rain. So all they would hold the tent. One one um, one of my crew would hold the tent for me, so I could just walk right in. Like <laughs> like I didn't even need to open the the flap. Yeah, and then sit down, and then you know eat whatever, or they would like start taking those guns and jabbing different parts of my calves or, or, you know, figuring out what hurts or what I needed to change. Um, and then just seeing what I needed for the next slap and they would give it to me and that would be it. It was really, really seamless. It was, um, it was never stressful. Cause like, I remember last year or the year 2018, I just all the time would feel stressed, you know, like that five minutes just kind of rushing around trying to find what you wanted. And, and it's just a little, you know, that stress builds up, but I never felt stressed about what am I going to do? Is this five minutes going to be enough time? Yeah. So, like, was, um, yeah. Uh, Johan Steen uh, turned up without a crew in 2018 and, you know, just the images of him sitting in his chair, his uh, liquids on one side, food on the other, and a, a blanket over his head. Mm -hmm. um, it must have been, uh, it, it's amazing that he could actually get that done. How vital yeah. do you think the crew is in your case? Um, well, by the time we get to, you know, the second night, you'll have a lot of crew. So Johan had his own tent. He had Guillaume crewing for him, Andy Pearson. Um, and then they become really helpful. But yeah, I mean, you can get through a whole day with, crewing yourself if you're organized um johan started taking naps the first day because he hadn't even slept yeah. really getting there because that whole you know plane situation and flying back and then i think he landed in dc somewhere and had to drive to tennessee so he had barely slept so he started sleeping pretty early um yeah i mean you can do it without crew for sure but i definitely attribute my awesome like really awesome experience to having really great crew. Yeah. Um, when I was chatting to Will Hayward uh, a couple of days ago, I asked him the question, you know, how much further do you think uh, Maggie could have gone? And, uh, you know, he, I, his response was basically that uh, someone can look absolutely fantastic like Dave Proctor, then all of a sudden just collapse. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Where, how much further do you reckon you could have gone? You said you were, aiming at that 72 hours i mean yeah that i mean i i want to say that i was confident i could get through the night but like again i could in two laps just be like a complete mess because everyone says the third night is pretty gnarly i've never stayed awake for three nights to to run like i mean look how fatigued will was he got just kind of disoriented so like really anything could have happened um I had, like I said, really good crew that was taking care of me. Um, so I was hoping that, you know, if I did have a bad time, we could just keep getting through it. I think that fourth day would have been like huge, you know, like mm. when we all get there or whatever happens next year, I, I, I mean, I think it's possible to get there. Um, that is going to be an interesting uh, <laughs> just getting through those like day loops. I mean, the trail just feels rockier and leafier and yeah. gnarlier each day. So, like, I can't imagine a fourth day and just like no sleep. Yeah. So this. Um, year, so who knows? Yeah. So this year for Bigs, you know, pretty much everybody's turning up. You've got Johan and Courtney DeWalter back. Uh, obviously, yourself, Will, Dave, Katie Wright, uh, and some other big names around the world. Uh, I was chatting to Will. Uh, sorry, not to Will, to Lazarus Lake few days ago and uh basically his prediction is that it's going to be you and ya uh johan hitting it out what do you reckon hmm. that i mean i learned a lot from johan i i mean if i use johan's strategy and he uses his strategy yeah it's going to be <laughs> i i can see it coming down to who can just survive a fourth day and get to that fourth night <laughs> yeah because his strategy is you just show up, you, you, there's no decision. You just, you're not going to quit. So if I use that same strategy again, yeah, <laughs> that's possible. But I think all, a lot of other people will be using it too. Um, but I mean, Johan, Johan again is like kind of in the situation that Will was um, where he showed up. I mean, okay, so I ran with Johan on the second night 
that I made it part way through the night. And I was trying to run next to him just to kind of like, it's better to run with a buddy. You don't feel so alone. It also kind of keeps you moving forward. And, and just like, I felt like we were running into each other. Like I was, my eyes were shutting. And I think, I think he was doing the same thing. And I was like, this guy's never going to make it through this night. And like, I ended up stopping at 44 hours and I thought there's no way. And then, you know, Guillaume drops and then all these other, like, and Johan's still going and, and he won. So <laughs> he's, he's pretty incredible. It so certainly is. it's going to be such an amazing matchup and to, to see this one unfold later this year, the, um, the last one standing format has just exploded around the world. I think it's now in about 40 countries. What do you think is the appeal of this? Uh, I know part of it is like, I call Laz is like the Midas of race directors. Like every format or every little like thing he, com he comes up with is like, it turns to pure gold. <laughs> like <laughs> obviously Barkley marathons was the first big, you know, that just it was kind of underground, but I mean, it's huge. And that documentary that Netflix did made it, or is on Netflix, um, yeah, it was huge. made it really popular. So like, you know, you see people in the airport and they're like, oh, you're a runner. Do you know this Barkley marathon? Like everyone knows it. Um, and now I feel like Biggs is almost reaching that popularity or like, you know, world, almost like a name that you just know. I think the format's just so intriguing because I think that's why it's like, um, you know, there is such a level playing field. Um, you can look at marathon times and figure out, oh, this person has a better shot of winning because, because they run a 220 marathon and this person runs a 230 marathon. Like it's a good decider, like of who's going to win in a, you know, a, a 50 mile race or something like, um, but like, you don't know what's in someone's head or what they can, what they can do, or, you know, it, sleep's a huge factor. So, um, I think it's just like anyone, anyone can, can do well at this race. Yeah. Are you going to take on Barkley this year? Yeah. Well, yeah. So I got, I got the entry as a, a perk of, of winning bigs. Yep. So yes, I will be going back to frozen head. <laughs> so you've done it twice before. Is that right? Yeah. 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 So, so that's how... a whole different ball game. <laughs> I will not go into it as confident as I did going into bigs. Like I secretly had this, like, I can do this. Just not going to quit and just do what you got to do. Um, but big, but Barkley is a whole different, <laughs> I, I just, Barkley is so dependent on, besides like how hard you train, how ready you are, you know, navigation. So dependent on weather at this point, um, because the course is so hard, even guys like Gary Robbins, who are, mm. I mean, are so fast, like normally could just kill any kind of race that has tons of elevation gain. Um, but you make that thing muddy and, you know, everyone's already up against like the, the time limits. So yeah, I don't know. It's fun to keep trying, um, but I really hope for better conditions this year. Yeah, and what's the what's the Laz's special little uh, gift that he's asking everybody for this year? Um, what was it? We have to bring a case of Moxie soda. Oh, <laughs> it's really? Like, <laughs> it's like this hard to find soda that like. I don't know. It's like $38 a case on Amazon. I don't know. I've not seen it sold here. Plus I can't fly with that. So like, I don't know where they sell it in Tennessee. So they might just have it sent to his house or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Uh, now we've got uh, the Australian last one standing called the Clint Eastwood uh, in August this year. Uh, it's a super easy course, which I think is uh, probably like your your uh, night course. So the to give you an idea, the elevation total ele elevation would have to be all of about a meter, you know, one yard. Mm -hmm. So it's almost dead flat. It's uh, a <laughs> surface to a uh, to a clay tennis court, that sort of fine red uh, red clay, 
and just absolutely beautiful through some, uh, some bird sanctuaries. Uh, for the first, uh, first timer of a last one standing, like, what are your tips? Um, well, if they want to stay in it the whole time, then, and that's their goal, then I think just don't compare yourself to resumes of anyone else there. Just, you know, show up, you know, take care of yourself between laps because that time that you do between laps is very, very valuable. What you do with that time, um, take care of yourself, continuously eat fuel, like you're fuel, like you're fueling for over 300 miles and just keep that going. Um, and I mean, it's really flat. Um, so, you know, there's no variation. So, I mean, you need to be stretching and doing different things, um, between loops. And then at night, um, start just taking micro naps. Uh, if you want to stay and you want to, you want to stay awake as long as possible, you know? Um, so between those loops, just lay down, shut your eyes, you know, um, and try to get some sleep. Even if you're not, don't freak out if you're not sleeping. Um, cause resting with your eyes closed, you know, laying horizontal is, is better than nothing. Um, I think that's like the main things I tried to keep in mind for this yeah. past year. Did you incorporate much walking into your training? Um, well, I moved to Colorado from Pennsylvania. So I moved from sea level to, we live at 7,000 500 feet uh I don't know the meters um but you know it's over a mile up um and so when you're walking up a hill running up a hill here it's basically walking so <laughs> um just by default a lot of my long longer runs were a bit of hiking um but uh so on the course for us, for, for Laz's trail loop, there are a bunch of hills and everyone would always walk those hills. It's just a good, a good time to kind of stretch your legs and do something different. Um, for this walking, for your flat loop that you have, uh, I feel like, yeah, you would have to just pick your moments to walk, maybe like walk at the same tree every time or something. Mm -hmm. um, Cause I imagine, you know, you can be getting easily go too fast. And I mean, it's an unforgiving surface, the, the pavement. Yeah, um, I certainly noticed last year in the last one standing, uh, some of the guys coming in with about 30 minutes rest. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, but if I look at the results from Biggs particularly, uh, you, know, you guys being able to survive for obviously 60 hours with you know, nothing more than you know, eight minutes you know, during the day, for only five minutes rest. Uh, it is such a new format and everybody is still trying new strategies what you know what uh would you say could be sort of the the winning strategies without giving away too many secrets of course um i mean there's probably not too many secrets it's just it's just you know knowing that and then believing it and then executing it like like when johan said he just showed up and he wasn't going to quit like that's a big secret, but it's easier. It's harder to like make yourself really like buy into that. Um, but it seems like, I mean, Johan wasn't going fast last year. Uh, Courtney was ahead of him the whole time until, you know, that last, that third night um, when Guillaume won, I don't know. I don't know his splits and, and how, cause it was him and Harvey for such a long time. And Guillaume's usually one of the, the faster runners on the course. Um, in the past two years that I've been there, but he's never first. He's not that fast, um, you know, and he still has probably like maybe, you know, eight minutes of trail uh, of, during the trail loop. So he's not going super fast. Um, there were some guys, I think, doing 40 minute laps at Laz's at, uh, Bigs this past year, and they didn't last too long. Um, so you know, I think it's not going too fast, but it's also leaving yourself enough time um, to do what you need to do. There's another guy named Will um, this past year, and I think he was there the year before too. He was, every time he would finish with like a minute 
or whatever. He would basically finish, stay in the corral. His crew would do whatever. Oh, wow. And, and he would go back out. And he, he went over 100 miles um, doing that. He was like, I don't know what, I would have to look to see how long he lasted. But, you know, there's people who are coming in with way more time than him. And they were out before him. He just kept doing it. He's like, doesn't get all flustered about it. It's just how, how he ran it. Um, just because he was slow. Yeah, slower, and that's 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 how you knew it was going to be. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got Lazarus Lake coming out uh, to Brisbane this year for our the Clint Eastwood. Uh, now, he's not coming out for a holiday. We're going to have to put him to work uh, on the crew. What do, what uh, jobs do you reckon Laz would be good at? <laughs> uh, blowing the whistle, <laughs> uh, ringing the bell. <laughs> And entertaining the people who are in camp. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, uh, yeah, he would be good at um, smoking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's pretty famous for that, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, fun. he's super fun to hang out with, actually. So that's yeah. going to be fun. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think it will be. And I think it will uh, definitely be mobbed by... You know, with 200 runners, but also, you know, a small town uh, of about 400 in the camp. It's going to be, uh, it's going to be a pretty, pretty big time. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. I mean, he's, it's funny when you, well, I remember the first year I ran Barkley, it was like intimidating, almost like you finally see this guy in person that you've seen in the movies and pictures and read about. Um, but he's actually like, really cool down to earth um and really funny and clever and he's just cool to hang out with so i think it'll be fun people are gonna have an awesome time yeah i think so too well maggie uh thank you very much have a great time at barclays but also you know good luck with bigs looking forward to seeing uh how far you go this year and you know you and uh, johan and who knows how far it's going to go uh, but thank you very much for joining me in Chats from the Chest Freezer. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Sam. <laughs>